Hello, everyone, and welcome to Growing Together, a gardening podcast with me, John Lamb, and Don Kinsler, a lifelong gardener and the North Dakota State University Extension Horticulturist for Cass County. Don, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm especially doing great because I can still see our landscape. Uh, it's not covered with snow yet. I mean, snow is great insulation, yep. but man, you got to love this uh, fall, this early winter we've had. It is It is nice, and for some of us who still haven't cleaned out our gutters, well, then now I know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. And I'm going to add a little more leaf mulch over okay. our chrysanthemums. That's right. Now is a good time to do that, good to time. get out and, yep. and get there's a little bit of frost in the soil, then yep. we mulch uh, whatever needs mulching because that'll keep it comfortably frozen. So I'm I'm enjoying this. Well, we are, of course. We're 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 past Thanksgiving. We're now we're we're firmly in the holiday season. We're gonna. We're gonna I do want a little snow before Christmas. It looks better. I, I it want looks a white better. Christmas. It's, it's it's nice to have that, especially if you've got lights outside that helps reflect and light things up. And it's, it does. It's really kind of nice. But uh, hey, Don, what's the best Christmas present you could possibly get? I'm guessing we're going to find out. A broken drum, because you just can't beat it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Well, maybe maybe a drum isn't a great idea for everybody, broken or not, but we're going to talk about some Christmas gift ideas for the gardeners in your life. Uh, This is something that you've kind of gone over in the past in uh, in a column for the forum, so kind of revive some of these ideas. Gardeners are easy to buy for. Yeah. We're a good bunch to buy a gift for well and really can somebody have too many garden trowels or or never you know, yes exactly it's it's pretty like you said it's pretty easy you find something and maybe you find something just in a different color or a different handle or something like you know and the the holiday gifts that we're going to talk about may not seem really flashy uh, but they're things that most of us gardeners would really treasure you know when you find some of the things we're going to talk about it's like man yeah yeah, yeah. Again, they may maybe aren't the things that are going to be really flashy, but they're the practical, down to earth things the gardener is really going to use and enjoy. Well, and a lot of these things are are items that are not they're not going to break the bank. Um, right. And but I think like for gardeners, sometimes you go into a garden center and you buy all these other things, and you see something, and you're like, well, it's only ten dollars, but. I'll, I'll, I'll get that later. So this is the time for all those gifts that they've kind of put off. This is the something you can give them. And they will really appreciate it because it's something that they've probably wanted for a while and they can always use more of. You know, most of us know somebody that enjoys gardening. You know, and gardening applies to so many people, house plants, vegetable gardening, fruit growing, lawn care, you know, you name it. So there's going to be a little something for almost everybody. And now when you do go out to look for some of these things, now some of the national chain stores or hardware stores may have put their summertime gardening things away. So you might not find all of these items there. So maybe a, a good bet is to go to the local garden centers, locally owned garden centers, because usually they'll have these things on the shelf year round. So you can probably find many of the things we're going to mention at your locally owned garden center. And the added benefit of, of course, of getting giving gardening gifts uh, as Christmas gifts is that it helps you think of warmer weather, even for oh, yeah. inside indoor uh, people who plant indoors, people who have house plants, it just it it keeps you occupied. In, it's hope. Well, exactly, it's hope. And like we said, we've had a very moderate. Uh, I guess we're technically not in winter yet, but we've had a very moderate uh, fall. And the 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 next couple of weeks, you know, look pretty decent too. But it 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 helps you think ahead of warmer times and spending time outside and that's just always like again yes. hope, hope so is when a there. person opens some of these christmas gifts it's like wow yeah yeah, there's Spring a, is going to be right There's a the physical corner. gift there, but then the probably maybe even the bigger gift yeah, is that's that a gift good point. of hope and gift of... <laughs> that's a good point, John. Well, let's jump in. Let's talk about for, for houseplant growers. And let's start with let's start with something, uh, stocking stuffers. For me and my family, we did stocking stuffers before we launched into the gifts. Any kind of ideas for stocking stuffers for houseplant donors? Yes. Uh, something that would fit well, you know, if you actually put it in a stocking, this is going to fit well. And uh, a box of Miracle Grow fertilizer. Yeah. You know, again, it may not sound like the flashiest, but you know, we all use Miracle Grow. It's going to get used. You know, coming towards spring, you want to fertilize house plants, and yeah, you can. There's a number of different sizes. You know, depending on the size of the stocking you've got hung up. Yep. <laughs> there's all the way from little boxes, and of course, we don't endorse particular brands. But you know, mentioning the brand doesn't mean we're trying to endorse it, but Miracle Grow is certainly the most visible and readily gotten. So that it's would be accessible. a great, great stocking stuffer for a houseplant grower. That would be a good one. 
Yeah. I, I'd suggest a bag of potting mix, but that might be a little hard to that's, stuff that's quite, in a stocking. That's quite a big stocking, isn't it? <laughs> how, okay, how about for, for, well, you know, maybe gifts under the tree or gifts that you would yeah, could well, put in a, a box? Yeah, a houseplant or, book. You know, there oh, are houseplant yeah. books that are quite comprehensive that list kind of each page is devoted to a different houseplant type. And, of course, the key to growing houseplants is knowing what each individual is and the individual care. So a good houseplant book is would be wonderful. Uh, also, clay pots of different sizes. You know, I we've talked about the traditional um, non-glazed terracotta clay pot. There's just something so, you know, kind of earthy and, you know, it just and plants grow well in them. So a number of different sized clay pots. I'm glad you say that one because there we're talking about a gift that is, you know, it, uh, it's a very humble thing. People would probably not think of getting themselves no. a pot at the store. And again, that's something where you think, I, I can get that later. But and it'll give, be a surprise. You give it to somebody and they will use it. They will. And it'll be a surprise. And under you know the what tray. else with, with clay pots like that? You know, you can also decorate them, you could yes. customize it. You exactly. could say to grandma. You could say yeah. Yeah. anything. Put exactly. your name on it. Something yeah, our like kids have painted great uh, for put little to decorations it, on clay That's a great pots. family be awesome. Family craft project. Hey, that'd project. be a great idea for a, a, a child to a grandparent. Absolutely. A decorated clay pot. That'd be Absolutely. awesome. Uh, one little thing, uh, wrap it up good in paper. I mean, you know, inside. Yeah. You know, wrap it because they are breakable. Yep. And so if somebody you, shakes it You don't hard, want to shake that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So other things, uh, along with the clay pots, drainage saucers. Oh, yeah. I like the clear plastic drainage saucers because they do the job. Uh, you know, they don't detract from the plant. And you need a number of different sizes of them to fit under pots. So uh, clear plastic saucers. I never have enough of them, it seems. And so, yeah, that would be awesome to go along kind of with the clay pots. Uh, also, um, rooting hormone. People that grow house plants like to grow more of them, and they like to take cuttings. And so rooting hormone, there's little jars, little packages of it that you'll find at the garden center. Rooting hormone is a great idea as well. Uh, also, uh, to keep the insects at bay, systemic house plant insecticide. Garden centers sell it, and it's granules that you add to your houseplant soil, and that'll help keep them safe. And um, so other things a person can do uh, to keep those houseplants at bay, insecticidal soap or neem oil, all of those would be great gifts for somebody that really likes houseplants, you know, especially if that's their gardening thing, uh, that'd be great. Uh, and you know, one thing that I've, I've gotten for a gift that I really appreciate is a houseplant watering can, yep. a, a second one, because we've got houseplants All downstairs, yep. we've got plants upstairs, we've got some in the basement, and not having to haul the, the watering can up and down, uh, you know, having one at each level. That's really nice. Yeah. And I mean, a, a good sturdy one, you know, something that's kind of, uh, that doesn't look like it's so breakable, yeah. you know, and a, a good kind of a practical type one that you can water house plants with. And uh, for most of those, the spout should be uh, should be kind of narrow, mm -hmm. you know, not the big watering can that has the big end, you know, kind of the big uh, sprinkler type yep. head, you know, not one of those, but an actual house plant one that has the narrow spout, spout that you can kind of... Uh, you know, get in between the leaves and, and water. And especially sometimes if it's, even if it has a little curve on the end, it's a little bit, yeah, exactly. a, a little easier for the pour because yep. you really want to be a little bit more precise with that, right. where where the water is going. Because you, you don't want to have, again, with that overhead sprinkler kind of uh, watering can, outdoor yeah. watering can. Yeah, so that you don't water the whole table and right. everything, right. everything right. around it. <laughs> and also, um, you know, one of a decent size, you know, instead of a real little one that you have to keep going back to the sink to replenish, but, you know, one that maybe takes I don't know, half a gallon to a gallon at least would be a good one. And um, terrarium kits. Garden yeah. centers are, are places, houseplant places that sell houseplants, oftentimes will have a terrarium kit. And terrariums have made a resurgence again. You know, in the maybe 1970s, um, you could buy glass cutters. A glass cutting was a big deal. You, uh, you know, with gallon glass jugs, mm -hmm. they... Um, uh, one of the big stylish things uh, then were these glass cutters where you could take a glass 
jug, gallon jug, and cut the top off and make a terrarium out of okay. it. Okay. And yeah, I remember we got one of those. And uh, yeah, terrarium worked fine. But now you don't have to do that. You don't have to cut your own. You, there's lots of terrarium type th- um, containers. And so terrariums have made a resurgence, and they're fun. Plants grow well in those. You know, one one idea kind of along, all, especially with the terrarium, but, you know, all these other things we've talked about, you know, I would think that most people who are houseplant growers would not, they would readily appreciate another houseplant. You know, why not give somebody a plant? Definitely. Make sure that they've got space for it and feel them out. But I you, I see this. I see this. People who are houseplant growers, they'll post memes about like the, the last thing they need is another houseplant. What do they do? They'll go out and buy 10 more. And so not <laughs> only that, but, you know, again, another person, if you really want to personalize a gift here, here's what you could do. You could take a clay pot, customize it for that person, take a clipping like of, a, of a house plant that you've done and give them a starter or, yeah, or something like, I like that. like it. You know, where it's really personal because I think a lot of house plants, some people have had house plants for generations. Oh, yeah. They have their, they have their mothers or aunts or friends or something like that. They... House plants can can keep growing and keep keep doing well, but so to have that connection to make it personalized, I think that would be a great gift. Oh, that's a great gift. You know, talk about the gift that keeps on giving. This is actually one that will and gives back and, and, and gives, gives back. You know, that's a super idea. And because this time of year, you can easily buy a house plant. You know, even a, kind of a smaller starter mm-hmm. plant it doesn't have to be so huge and easily wrappable at the at the plant store. Yeah, so it doesn't get chilled and wrap it under the tree, that would be an awesome gift. Yeah, I think that would be a real fun one. You know, what's fun about that, too, is the houseplant stores or garden centers that sell houseplants have so many different types. I guarantee you that you will find a, a type that's unique and that that houseplant grower does not already have. Just Because make sure. there are so many new varieties. Just make sure you get the the light consideration right. You know, right. make sure that uh, it would it's a plant that would work better with them. And you know, uh, you could kind of go into if you if you know kind of like what that person's growing space is like. You can go to a local grower or a local a local uh, garden center, and you can ask them. Okay, I've got a friend who's got south facing windows, and they, right. What have you got that'll do well? Yeah, there? maybe they like textured leaves or very variegated leaves, something like that. Yeah, it's you could really do a wonderful gift that. Way. Yeah, that's a good idea, John. Well, from houseplants, let's go outside. You know, again, we're talking about how nice it is to see the lawn now. Imagine how nice it'll now how nice it'll be to see the lawn in spring and summer. People will be looking forward to that. What gift ideas do you have for for people to to for the for the lawn uh, lawn and yard enthusiasts? I've got the perfect stocking stuffer. First of all, yes, bring and it that on. is a pruning shears. Okay, a good quality handheld pruning shears. And the best kind are called a bypass pruner. Uh, And um, uh, it's a bypass pruner as opposed to an anvil type. So most of them that you look for will be the bypass. It means that the two blades bypass each other, which makes a cleaner cut. The anvil type, the blade comes down against a fixed surface, and it tends to crush the the, crush the stems. So anyway, a bypass. You're thinking more like the anvil type. If you think of like a paper cutter, yeah, exactly. Comes down versus a pair of scissors. But most of them that you find, not all, would be the bypass type. Type hand pruners, you know, and the type that fit in your hand and go for the good quality. You know, sometimes gardeners, we tend to try to economize so we can buy more plants. But, you know, get a, for a gift for somebody, buy the good, you know, and they're maybe going to cost a little more, but a good one that can last probably a lifetime. And the reason I say a pruning, an extra pruning shears, maybe they probably already got one, but the one you give might be a better quality that is easier to use lasts much longer, the blades stay sharper longer. And also, currently, I'm trying to find my hand pruner (laughs) because in the fall of the year, and I do have two, but now I'm down to one. In the fall of the year, I was cutting back perennials and I got distracted. I set my pruning shears down somewhere. It's lurking out in my perennial bed somewhere. And I hope I'll find it, but I'm in the market for another pruning shears if anyone's listening. Well, then maybe another <laughs> idea for a pruning shears would be a pruning shear sheath. Uh, that's a uh, good idea, a, too. A carrying case. An excellent idea. So anyway, that would be an awesome um, stocking stuffer. Well, other things, um, you know, our lawnmower blades 
cut so much better if they're sharp. And it also, um, a, a sharp blade that gives a good cut on your lawn, that also conserves moisture because a good crisp cut, the lawn doesn't dry out as much. Uh, so anyway, the point being a uh, lawnmower blade, sh well sharpened, is, is good. And it, it, it's not hard to take off that blade. It's just one bolt that holds it on. Well, anyway, um, okay, how do you sharpen it once you get the blade off? Well, they do have handheld uh, lawnmower blade sharpening tools. So just look that up on the internet. You can find those. That'll help uh, keep the lawnmower uh, enthusiast with a good sharp blade. Also, um, lawn sprinklers. You know, good heavy-duty type uh, with metal parts that aren't going to crack and break. And, um, well, a fertilizer spreader. I like the drop type spreaders. Uh, there are two types of fertilizer spreaders. There's the drop type that puts the fertilizer, you know, as the wheels turn, it drops the fertilizer right down, and then um, you turn around and go the next swath. That's as opposed to the cyclone spreaders that shoot it out. Uh, the cyclone spreaders tend to get it all over your lawn or all, all over your driveway and sidewalks and and if you've got and you uh, have to sweep that off yeah and if you've got a, a you know grass next to a, a planting bed then they you can might not shoot want it into that there fertilizer. right yep so i like the drops words now I, i'm curious how you're going to wrap up that uh, fertilizer one, spreader yeah. but but that <laughs> yeah send me photos um water f features a water fountain that all was like in a perennial bed or a landscape. A water feature is just so restful. Yeah. So that will be a great idea for a gift. Uh, sundials or statuary, you know, something like that just adds a little extra spark to a landscape or, or a perennial flower bed. That's always good. Uh, now, here's one that I really want on my wish list, hose guides. Uh, they, they make little hose guides that you push down to the ground, and they're kind of a little circular thing with a groove that will, as you're dragging your garden hose along the vegetable garden or flowers, it guides it so it doesn't come across your vegetables. See, in the garden, vegetable garden, when I'm pulling the hose along, I have to be really careful or the hose is going to brush across the newly planted tomatoes. And so those hose guides, you know, I don't know, I suppose maybe at least six or so. I don't know if they come in packages, but, you know, six or 12 of those would be an awesome present. Yep. And, uh, well, even a good garden hose, you know, a good quality one. You know, I've bought the cheap garden hoses that kink and just don't last. They don't last. And, yeah, so a good quality garden hose uh, would be super. And then also a heavy-duty loppers, yep. the lopping shears, you know, the type with the long handle that are for a little larger diameter branch. Right. Um, that would be great. Um, now, a lot of us also like to do spot uh, spot digging out of weeds, and so a dandelion digger. Because sometimes if you don't uh, have a lot of weeds, you don't need to spray and just dig them out with a dandelion so digger. So explain what a dandelion digger is as opposed to like just a you know a garden yeah, spade or, or like a, a, a dandelion digger has a blade at the end with a V shape. Okay. Uh, kind of an inverted V, if that makes sense. Yep. And so you just push that down to the ground. I've got a long-handled one, so I don't have to get down on my hands and knees. I can, with the long-handled one, just push that down in at the base of the weed, and it goes down deep enough to cut off that weed, in most cases a dandelion, and pops it back out. And I think sometimes uh, the, they may be, the blade of this may be a little bit uh, curved, so it goes into the ground maybe a little bit easier. And exactly. then sometimes I've even seen a, like a serrated edge on one side well, to sure. kind of cut through uh, a little easier. To the, cut it down deep enough so the likelihood of it coming back is, that's, is less. That's another good stocking stuffer, by the way. Yeah. That could, that could easily fit in a yeah, stocking. Yeah, exactly. And also for applying uh, weed killers or um, insecticides, a hose end sprayer. Have you ever used those? The the kind of the jar yep. that fits at the end of a garden hose. Yep. And then you just up at the top has a dial. Uh, you don't have to do any dilution or anything. You, you put the product, uh, insecticide, weed killer, into the jar. And then whatever it says for a gallon, if it's one ounce, you just set the dial for one ounce and it automatically proportions it out. So uh, if I have a large area of weeds to spray, then I put the herbicide in, set it to the proper, and then use that at the end of the hose. So for many things, that's a very, very good 
good means, that hose-end type sprayer. And of course, there's lots of books like for landscaping ideas. And that's such a good holiday gift um, from the winter to get a book of landscape ideas because that can really get kind of your creative juices flowing and inspiration for what to do with your landscape next uh, next spring. Yeah, well, that's, all those sound really great. We're going to take a quick little break when we come back. More gardening gift ideas. Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit inforum.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. All right, we're back and we're talking about good garden gift ideas for the gardener in your life. What to what to wrap up for them for this holiday season? Good We're gifts. an easy bunch to buy for. An easy bunch to buy for, and, and yeah. So let, let's let's keep going here. Let's talk about vegetable gardeners. What are some things that there would be some good ideas for them for vegetable? Gardeners? Now I mentioned that some of these gift ideas aren't going to be real snazzy, maybe, but they are so practical and they are going to make a, a gardener happy. Okay, so for the vegetable gardens, or now don't laugh, but a ball of of twine, yeah. <laughs> a ball of twine and some wood stakes. Now, the reason for this is uh, for gardeners, um, maybe new gardeners, a ball of twine and a couple of wooden stakes is used to stretch across the garden, whether it's a traditional garden or even raised bed garden, uh, to uh, stretch across the area and then make your row so that you get the, the items in a fairly straight row. The reason I like to plant in a straight row, uh, then you know uh, you know where those vegetables are going to come up. And so uh, when it's time to weed or whatever, you can see where the vegetables are coming up. So you know what I, I like, like to measure the and know where that row and, is going to be. And that's something that I've found even myself, just like I'll be I'll be working on a project and I'll think like, do I have any twine? Do I have garden sticks? <laughs> yes. Do I have all these things that and you think of? where did I put them last and, Yeah, year. and then you're like, oh, if you need to stop and go to a store to buy this, these things. So, yeah, all these, like you said, all of these may not be fancy ideas. They may not – we're not talking about buying new cars for people but or buying jewelry. Yeah, but they're a treasure in their practicality. And, yeah, and that's the thing that gardeners really appreciate is the practicality, is the hands-onness. But I think like yeah, that idea of the, the, the twine and the sticks, and especially if you're going to gift to somebody who – who's going to start a vegetable garden, if you throw in some, I'm not sure what they would call it, but like garden signs so that you could yeah. you could mark what that is, you're kind of giving them a, a starter kit. And what exactly. you're also saying with that is that I believe in you and here's something that you can look forward to. This is, yeah. this is I, so I think that's a great gift And idea. some inexpensive wooden stakes or little plastic stakes just to mark where you planted the rows, where you seeded the yeah. rows. You know, tomato plants, I mean, you can see, but you know, the rows of radishes and if you leave a little wooden stake in each spot row, you know where that's going to come up, which yeah. greatly helps with weeding. And um, also a yardstick, a yardstick or two, because most of the seed packages say, okay, space the rows, you know, 12 inches apart, 18 inches apart. And, you know, a, um, a retractable um, – Oh, measuring what tape. A, yeah, measuring yeah. tape. <laughs> uh, tape search, measure. Searching for the words. Yeah, yeah. tape measure. Uh, I mean, they're fine, but you got to kind of stretch it out. Okay. A, a yardstick, you can lay there and then measure. And I like to have a yardstick at each end of the row so I don't have to keep moving it from one end. But then when you go to space your rows, that yardstick just works so really, really well. And you might indicate, um, you know, put a little note with the yardstick because somebody that unwraps it might say, well, you know, why'd you give me a yardstick? Right. And so you might indicate the reasons for some of these things too. That will help as well. And um, soaker hoses. I would love to have more soaker hoses. Uh, soaker hoses, of course, the type that you stretch out and they em emit just kind of an oozing flow of water right along the base of the vegetables. So you aren't doing overhead, wasting a lot of uh, evaporation and things and getting it right to the root system. So I think most gardeners would probably like some more soaker hoses because yeah. I don't have enough. If I had more, I wouldn't have to move them so often. Right. I could I could kind of leave some of them in place. Another thing that I always enjoy are galvanized 
buckets uh, to harvest vegetables uh, or maybe to mix up some soil in uh, galvanized buckets. And maybe you might need to go to a hardware store or farm supply store, but a galvanized bucket, and I'm thinking of those that are a little wider than tall, you know, um, uh, they just work so well for a number of things. And for harvesting vegetables, uh, they work just really, really slick. Yeah. And I love galvanized buckets. They're just wonderful for that. Um, now, this one could get to be a little more expensive, and that is a high-quality garden hoe, the weeding type of hoe. And uh, well, we, by weeding type hoe, I mean one with a fairly thin blade so that you're not pulling a great big bulky hoe through our heavy soil, but a thin blade that will kind of whisk through the soil surface, cutting weeds off. And of course, I you know we've we've done a whole podcast on gardening tools. This is one of your favorite gardening tools. It is a an, a a hoe that a weeding type hoe that has a almost a surgical steel blade that you can sharpen well that'll maintain that edge. And a well sharpened hoe will just glide through, cut off the little weeds. But uh, for a good garden hoe, which I bought one a couple of years ago, and um, a good garden hoe could be $100 or so. So it's maybe not a stocking stuffer. I don't know how you'd stuff one in the stocking anyway, but you know, a little more expensive. So you can probably expect to pay $90 to $100. But on the other hand, I expect mine to last a lifetime because it's really well uh, well built. And so I would like that. Oh, let's see. Gosh, another thing that I think is awesome, I actually bought myself a second one, is a pump sprayer, a two-gallon pump sprayer. Bought myself one this year, too. And you know why I bought two, a second one? Uh, because I wanted one for insect sprays, you know, oh. again, for the vegetable garden, okay. uh, insect sprays and fungicides. Okay. Those you could put in, you know, um, because those products aren't going to kill, uh, they aren't going to kill plants. Yep. Okay. Now, you know, stick with me. The, the other one, as I give my rambling explanation here, but the second one I use for herbicides, yep. for weed killers, as I spot spray weeds. Yep. Okay, now if you really thoroughly wash out that weed spray, you could use that, you know, triple rinse and make sure everything is all out. Then you could use that to apply insecticides and fungicides. But it makes me nervous uh, putting something in a sprayer, weed killer, that would also kill your tomato plants. If there was any residue left in that, it could curl up your tomato plants. So that's why I keep one uh, sprayer for Insect sprays, fungicides, plant-friendly type things. When you can't things. make it to City and Hall or school board meetings, herbicides. local journalists from Inforum.com so anyway, will be so there to report the facts and get your questions sprayer, answered. Another one local I think would really be handy. For you. And then with Stay a black marker, I labeled each one yep. so I don't get them confused. Do it clearly so, yeah. And, yeah. and so other people understand too. Exactly. The other thing that has really, really gathered traction in the past few years is raised bed gardening. And there are some really nice kits, raised bed gardening kits. I think that this is a great gift idea. Oh, I think so too. And you know, it may not, it may not, depending on how much space you've got in the house, it may not be something that you assemble right away. Right. But uh, you know, yeah, I think that this is something that again speaks to the idea of that. You know, warmer weather will be coming, yep. and you'll be able to and spend there's, time. Yeah, there's everything from kind of the sturdy wooden kits to kind of a portable. You know, for somebody that maybe is in a home, maybe that they aren't going to stay in too long. There are even kind of portable canvas type kits. You know, they aren't going to be there for you know the next 20 years, but uh, they'd give somebody the means to grow vegetables uh, on kind of a more temporary basis. Yeah, it's a great gift idea. How about for fruit tree growers? Well, I would love to have, you see, they always say uh, the best gift you give somebody is somebody you kind of want yourself. Yes. And I don't have this, but I want one. And that's an apple picker, a long-handled apple picker so that you can reach the upper apples. So that would be good. Yeah. And some of them even have collapsible ha handles, you know, telescoping handles. So that would be a little easier to wrap as well. So uh, and also a pole pruner. Our fruit trees need uh, pruning. And so to reach some of the upper branches, a pole pruner would also be handy. And, uh, oh, 
tree wraps. We never have enough tree wraps. Now, I mentioned before that the tree wraps that I like best are the types that are on a roll rather than the rigid white type uh, that have kind of a limited diameter around which you can go. But the tree wraps on a roll uh, that you spiral, start at the bottom, spiral their way on up, those can be wrapped around almost any diameter fruit tree. Plus, you can snake that wrap up into some of the higher branches that are also susceptible to winter injury. So I really like tree wrap on a roll. That, I suppose, could be a stocking stuffer. That would be a good yeah. stocking stuffer. And yeah. so anyway, you never have enough of those because some of those are probably a one-season use. So yep, people one would, Yeah, would really ap- appreciate that. And also fruit tree spray. Okay. One of the um, worst apple problems is the apple maggot, which gets in and uh, you realize you've had apple maggot when you cut the apples open in the fall and see all the brown streaking inside. So a good fruit tree spray. Boy, if you found that under the Christmas tree, anybody that has an apple tree, if you found that under the Christmas tree, uh, you would say thank you. Yeah. How about for flower gardeners? I think a lot of people really appreciate flower gardening, and I would imagine that there's no shortage of gift ideas here. Oh, man, yeah. A good stocking stuffer, again, would be the box of miracle Grow fertilizer because flowers really do respond well to feeding. The other thing that would really grow go well for any of the gardeners that have containers, you know, who among us, I guess, don't have some flowering containers yeah. somewhere on our, on our yard? Um, Osmocote fertilizer. That is okay. the timed release fertilizer that the directions will tell you for a certain diameter pot how much to sprinkle on. So that's the timed release fertilizer, slow release, that will help feed your flower pots throughout most of the summertime. And I um, might also mention um, a big bag of potting mix. Wouldn't that be something under the tree? But I'd like to see how you disguise that, too. (laughs) Exactly. And um, other things, uh, well, there's rain barrel type kits to get some good good fresh water. Uh, If if you're in the mood for a larger type gift, potting benches can be ordered from some of the different supply catalogs. And, you know, when when a person is potting up some of these type things or or working with plants, it really helps to have it up at a higher level so you don't have to stoop as as much. And uh, we mentioned labels on a vegetable garden, but labels, either metal or plastic, I kind of like the metal. But identifying what flowers, what perennials you have is really, really important. For example, if you have iris and if you've bought a nice kind of expensive iris variety that's of a really nice deep color, it's nice and important to keep track of what that variety is. Because then when you go to give some of those to somebody else, you'll be able to tell them exactly what named variety it is. Well, and especially also, you know, it's nice to have, we take pride in our gardens and we like to share that with people. Right. So if you uh, like to have people over, you know, let them walk around. You don't always have to give them a guided tour. And if you have that information, think of it like it is a museum. If you have that information right point. by the piece there, because it is a piece of art. It, it tells you what it is. They can take a photo of it and they can say, oh, that's something I want to look into. I want to see if that will grow in my yard. Exactly. And the type of labels that I like best are the metal labels, uh, you know, with a little Little, little. Uh, what am I trying to say? The little there's a little feet. stand, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah stand exactly. that, that goes down in, and yep. the writable surface. Yep. And of course, the the longest lasting um, tags uh, labels that I found are the a metal one. They're kind of a zinc type metal, and you write on simply with a pencil. They last a long, long time, uh, longer than some of the marking pens. Even on the elements. Even on the elements, it's surprising. And um, that's just some other things that maybe a person might uh, consider for the flower gardens. Again, some statuary or different things um, that you could put in. Other things uh, for flower gardening that would really be nice uh, would be a, a light kit. Yep. Uh, indoor, so that people can start their own flowers from seed. That's always fun. So you might consider that for the flower gardener as well. Well, let's take another quick break, and when we come back, still more gift ideas for the gardeners in your life. If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out our full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, 
Find your next great listen right now at inforum.com slash podcasts. That's inforum.com slash podcasts. Okay, we're back and we're talking more gift ideas for the gardener for you this holiday season. Ideas, things that would make a great gift that a gardener would really appreciate to see under, you know, have, have wrapped up and given to them. Something that would really be that they would really appreciate because like as we've been saying a lot of these gifts may not be they may not be the wow factor thing but because as gardeners we 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 are very hands on we there's a practicality that we really appreciate that we really enjoy so the, there's so many of these gifts that you will always will mean something and will be appreciated and will be used. And that's going to make the gardener smile. When they open these things up, they, they're going to smile because they are so down to earth and just they're so stable and they're what we need and use and will be appreciated. And you know what? So far, none of the gifts that we've talked about need batteries. So you don't no. have to, you don't have to worry about finding <laughs> I batteries. I don't to think use. there's much assembly required. No, there's I not much assembly with the ones we've these. talked about. I don't think so. So let's talk about just in general, gardeners of all types. What are some things that I've gardeners will appreciate? I've got the perfect stocking stuffer okay. for uh, anybody that likes, you know, again, gardening appeals to so there's so many different aspects. So uh, no matter what your, your particular aspect of gardening, I've got the thing. Okay. And that is the the latest, newest uh, 2024 edition of the Prairie Garden book. And the Prairie Garden is a book that is put out each year for the last about 90 years uh, from based in Winnipeg. I'm on the committee, the nonprofit committee that assembles this. And the 2024 edition is hot off the press. Okay. And now this edition is called Year-Round Gardening. That's what's going to apply to almost any gardener. Um, and in that, in this book, this edition is uh, 57 articles. So it's the type of thing you can sit down over a cup of coffee and read one of the articles. And it's everything from um, one article says uh, houseplants that are toxic to dogs and cats. Another one is how to grow lettuce all year long. Uh, I've got a couple articles in it. Uh, one, one of mine is how to grow melons. Okay. And anyway, there's so many different uh, on you know houseplants, lawn care, you know how to create a prairie garden on your lawn, and just many things. So uh, this is a really good down to earth, and it's written for our area, based out of Winnipeg, and the material is just great for North Dakota, Minnesota, etc. So it's uh, called the Prairie Garden. And the website for ordering isn't difficult. It's uh, the Prairie Garden, all one word, the Prairie Garden dot C A C is in cat A for Canada, yep. the Prairie Garden dot C A. And you can also order past issues of this. The issues are wonderful. One year was all on shade gardening. One year was on fruit growing. One year was on vegetable. And you can still get order the past years. And they're evergreen. They really don't go out of out of style or out of – yeah. So if, and, and ask I your think local your gardener garden, would love that. Your first. local garden center may carry it too. They might. They might. Um, you, just, you could call ahead. Exactly. Yep. It's called the Prairie Garden this year's edition, uh, 2024, year-round gardening. So that would be great. Other things that gardeners would love, um, a membership in a local garden club. Yeah, that's uh, a great one. In the Fargo-Moorhead area, there are about three different garden clubs. So many localities have a garden club. So look that up. And uh, garden clubs love new members. It, it's not like they're a clique. They love new members, and so look that up. There's also horticulture societies, state horticulture societies, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. Um, so look up the state horticulture society. Also, there's a great um, there's a great magazine called the Northern Gardener, put out by the Minnesota State Horticulture Society, the Northern Gardener. Some um, garden centers actually have that uh, in, on their you know, for sale also. And uh, other things just generally, uh, wind chimes. Yeah. I love wind chimes out in the landscape. Um, rain gauge. Yep. And the Very good, usable. the good, uh, the good large diameter. Uh, my kids gave me one of these for Father's Day. Uh, could have been a good Christmas gift too. But one with a large diameter that actually reads 
very, very well. That's great. Rabbit and deer repellent, we all need that. Yep. And so Liquid Fence, Plant Skid, and Repel X are probably the good brands. And the garden centers have those good ones. You might consider trellises for flowering vines like clematis. Uh, and really, any um, shepherd's hooks are kind of nice too. They are, yeah, for hanging baskets. Yeah, for hanging baskets and out in the yard. And then in the in the in the, uh, in the winter, then you could put up bird feeders there too. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes you don't always have like a under an eave to hang a hanging basket. Yeah, or under a porch or something. So yeah, on shepherd's hook that. Those are excellent ideas. And, of course, we don't want to forget a good stocking stuffer of a gift certificate or gift card from a local garden center. Yep. That is fun, uh, man, because uh, there's there's no end of, to good things we can go to for a, at a garden center. Well, you know, another great gift, uh, especially stocking stuffer gift idea for for your uh, uh, fruits and vegetable growers or people who like flowers, a packet of seeds. You know, relatively inexpensive too. Oh yeah. Put a seed packet in there, and that's that's going to get that's going to get somebody really pretty excited. Oh, that's a excited. great idea. Another you know, good all around uh, gift too is garden gloves. Gar- uh, yes, always. you know, I, I'm not a real big glove purse wearing person, and my hands look like they look like the the hands of a hundred twenty year old. <laughs> I should get better at wearing gloves, and for some things like some of the pruning, especially roses, a um. Oh, pulling thistles, things like oh, that. Gosh. You need to. You need. Hey, gloves. I got to tell you about a pair of guard uh, gloves. Yeah. That Mary bought me two years ago. Okay. And it was from a farm supply store. A welder's gloves. Oh, yeah. They uh, go up to about my elbows, yep. and they are a heavy canvas type thing. And for pruning roses or other prickly type things, pulling thistles, they are just amazing, and they're heavy duty. So you really might check nice. into welder's gloves. You know, I, I think uh, a couple of years ago, one of the great gifts that, that you gave or that you made possible a couple of years ago was a calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. A calendar of things. And so – I think another great gift is if you go out and you just find a colorful calendar to give and go through there and mark different times of the year of things to look forward to or things, jobs to do out in the yard, things like that. Because I know in the spring, you'll always put out a, you'll publish kind of a, a to-do list, a to-do list. And, and why not, you know, look at one to do all winter long, whether it's even, you know, in January, look at seed catalogs, buy, uh, buy a seed catalog, all those things to kind of keep in mind, start planning your garden. And those things to do in the winter, and then even in the fall, the cleanup. So I think find a find a good, colorful uh, calendar. I think that would re- the gardener in your life would That'd really be a appreciate nice personalized that. type gift. Yeah, a, ni- a yeah. really nice one. And I think another personalized type gift is that. I know in in my with 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 my girlfriend Sam, you know, she's always asking me, "What do I want? What do I want?" And sometimes, you know, you don't you don't think of you don't think of like I, there's nothing I really need, and you don't want to come across as kind of greedy and things like that. And plus, a lot of times, I'll just go out and buy things. But So that's why a lot of these things are maybe small gift ideas that will be appreciated. But, you know, something else that you – is the jo- is the the gift of service or the gift of, oh, yeah. of doing someone a favor. If you are somebody who um, kind of dreads, like, let's say, sharpening your shears or cleaning your shears, oiling your shears, something like that, sharpening a lawnmower blade, another one that we talked about in the show, yeah. all those kind of chores that if you – maybe you're uncertain of how to do it. If you know somebody who's who's good at doing that, say, hey, you know, instead of giving me a gift this year, can I give you my shears and have you sharpen them for me? And I would really appreciate it. And I think that that would be, you know, that's a, every time they pick those up, they're going to remember you. And that's a that's a great gift to give. Yeah, and we talked about uh, about benches, and you know that's another thing to do that you could. This could be a joint effort if you know somebody who's handy w- working with wood or handy with construction things. If you could say, "Hey, can you help me with a project this year?" I think that that's uh, that's another great one. Whether it's helping somebody pour a, a cement a cement pad for a patio or something like that. Yeah, the gift of service on gift some of, of these service, things, I think, is really you know, that. That is meaningful, and or building a trellis, like we just talked about. A yes. trellis is really nice, but these things that may not necessarily be a lot of work. But if you don't have the tools, and if you've never done something like that before, it's just great to spend time with somebody that you appreciate, and to do that in your garden, I think, could be really be a, a, a great thing. 
That would be amazing. Or even saying, like, if you're somebody who has trouble bending over, say, hey, in the fall, could you come over and help me clean up my garden? Yeah. I think that that would be, especially for, I know with my with my mom, she asked that for her from her grandson. So that was a really nice, a really nice kind of gift. And I think, you know, one of the things we've talked about all these as things to go out and buy, I wanted to mention things to go out and do. All the, so a lot of these gifts you don't need to go buy new. I think right. that there is something for quality material that lasts. If you can find good things at a thrift store or at an estate sale or at an antique mall, as you pointed out, yeah. um, don't feel bad about giving somebody secondhand uh, use things if they're in good shape. Again, if you find good pair of gardening shears, bring them home, clean them up. Uh, and I love oil. vintage tools. Yes. Because I have the pitchfork that my great grandmother had. Yes. Um, and it is just awesome. It's the, the metal is heavy. The wood, I've used linseed oil and turpentine on, soaked it up really good. The wood handle is amazing. And it's got a, a substance, a substantial quality to it that that is good. It's going to last another, it, I think it probably is 100 years. It's going to last another 100. Yeah. And um, the, uh, I, I mentioned that I got a new weeding hoe. Okay. Yep. Well, I have uh, the other hoe that I have for making furrows in the garden, which is, it's it's a more massive hoe, you know, for making hoe, uh, the rows and stuff in the garden. Uh, that is one my parents had. And so that, I don't know, it's probably at least, uh, well, I'm well into my 60s. That thing's got to be 70 years because it was, I think it was 70, 80 years because it was old when I was a kid. And so... I've, so shop at some of these antique malls for their vintage tools. You know, take a look to make sure that they're still in good shape. I mean, the metal, even if the metal has a little rust on, that can easily be dealt with. But make sure that the wooden handle isn't cracked or something. But in most cases, they're really, really good. So that would be something that uh, if it's lasted this long, it'll probably last a whole lot longer. And a lot of this, maybe this is, you know, when, when this show will hit the air, will be in early December. So maybe you've already done your shopping by then. But, you know, again, with estate sales, a great time to find gifts. Keep an eye on that next year as you go to estate sales and garage sales. Um, you can find all of these things or, or a lot of these items that we've talked about. Uh, bring them home. You've given yourself a little bit of time to clean them up or maybe put them together in like a big care package. Put put a number a of these idea. things together, put them in a box and then say, hey, here is your various garden gift, but I think all that would be really, really fun. Yes, it would. You know, talking about all these has me kind of excited. I might buy myself a gift or two. For Not a bad idea. Dan, Don, you deserved it. You deserve <laughs> it. Go ahead and treat yourself. Uh, yeah, so it, it is fun. And all these things, it's already got me kind of excited for spring, just thinking about these gifts. Well, Don, this has been great. This has been so much fun to talk to you about this. If people have good ideas of their own or if people want to share gift ideas or if people have questions about gardening, indoor, outdoor, lawn, anything like that, what's the best way to reach you? Best way is to send me an email. And the email address is donald.kinsler, K-I-N-Z-L-E-R, at ndsu.edu. And I always enjoy, um, yeah, if you if you got a problem of something, you know, give me an email. But, you know, send me your successes, too. It's always fun. You know, we're all in this together. It's fun to share successes or when things don't go so well, too. Yeah, and let's say that. Let's say let's say if people want to send in pictures of great gardening gifts they've received in the past or that oh, they're yeah. giving, send in those pictures. We could put them up on Instagram. We, we, well, won't, we won't spoil the surprise for somebody. Maybe we'll hold <laughs> off until until. <laughs> Uh, until Christmas or so, but but do that, and it would be fun to see what other people are doing for for the gardeners in their lives. Yeah, this, that would be this fun. holiday season. Yeah, and so if you open up something, a uh, gardening gift, yeah, that, uh, that really tickled you, yeah, take a little picture of yourself in that gift, and I think that that'll, that'll be, be great. awesome. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, well, Don, great again to talk to you. This has been so much good fun talking to talk. with you, John. I always enjoy our weekly chats, and thank you for everyone that's listening in with us. All right, take care.